Welcome back to John's Films. Today we're learning how to track text or other objects to moving video. We'll do this in Fusion using the standard tracker. Starting in the Edit tab, I have my footage, which is DJI Mavic 2 Pro drone footage over St. Mary's, Colorado. I intend to stick uh, a label here that says this is St. Mary's and use it as an establishing shot as I either zoom in or zoom out from these trees. To do that, I need to use Fusion. So I will highlight the clip, right click, choose New Fusion Clip. It is annoying the way that playhead moves, but here we go. Highlight it over the clip in question and jump to the Fusion tab. Now you can see here, it's already opened the splines for me. I'm going to need to use something called a tracker. To use that, I'm going to highlight media in one, hit the shift and space bar, and bring up my select tool. I type tracker. You'll notice immediately there's three different types of tracker tool. The first one is the camera tracker. It intends to determine the motion of the camera in the scene. In other words, you're using it with static objects, maybe like these trees, and the camera is moving. So it takes the camera movement after it recreates it and can then apply it to objects in the screen. Next is the planar tracker. The planar tracker uses tracking objects on a flat surface like the road or a wall to be able to determine their shear, their rotation, and their tilt. Finally is the base tracker. This is the old school fusion tracker and it's really the fallback when the first two don't work. Unfortunately, the camera tracker didn't get a real good track as I tried to track against the foreground and the background to determine the motion of the camera. Instead, I found the tracker to work a lot better. So I'm gonna add it to my footage here. And now that I've got the tracker added, I need to train it. In other words, teach it what it's tracking. To do that, I'm gonna add a few different tracking points. The first one's added for me. I'll come down and add it here we go, over a point of high contrast. I clicked the Add button here, added another tracker. And in best case scenario, this is all you'd have to do. So you add a couple of trackers. I'm gonna add four so that I can get a real good plane uh, that it uses for, here we go, again, using all high contrast areas. But I've learned as I track this, it really helps if I find the uh, light color and it has the highest contrast and automatically set it. So in this case, because this is all green, the red color that exists has the highest contrast. So I tell it for each of these trackers, I want you to use the red. Notice how the difference in that looks a lot sharper. I want you to use the red light wave for your tracking. And now I'm gonna choose my adaptive mode. That is how it uses the frames when it's using them for tracking. I'm gonna say best match and set a threshold down pretty low. Next, I choose track forward, which is here on the right. And as it click track forward, you'll notice that it plays through frame by frame, following the, the contrast points that I've highlighted. In doing so, it's keeping track of the motion that they make, not only by themselves, but between each of the points. And as they converge, they determine that it's moving farther and farther away, and that motion will be preserved for me to use against my three-dimensional objects. Here we are wrapping up our track. It took about a minute and 15 seconds. And you can see a visual representation of the tracks that it expects to follow across the screen. So that's easy, right? We should now be able to click in our node graph Shift spacebar again, choose some text, add the text in, and what do I do with it? Well, you'll find if you pipe it into your tracker, add that text in, you'll see I don't see it on the, on the screen. I know it exists because I can view it on the left-hand side, but I still don't get to see it over my footage. That's because I need to go to the second tab here inside the tracker and choose an operation. This tells the tracker what, it, what I want it to do with the motion that it's captured. In this case, I'm going to match move, which means 
On the object that I add in, I want you to match the movement to the tracks that I've created. Here I'm going to use my merge of foreground over background. As it so happens, the green node here is the foreground tab. Apply mode, I can choose whether I want it to dissolve or burn in. Otherwise, I'm going to choose normal. Operator, we'll go with over. In other words, on top of. And you'll notice that my text, while it's flat straight here in my text window, as it's applied it to the track, it's given it this weird rotation. To solve that, I'm going to force it to stay stable by unclicking the rotation and telling the tracker, I don't want you to worry about the rotation, I just want you to worry about the positioning and the scaling, which is the size as it grows bigger and smaller. Now, everything's in place. So, let's press play and see what happens. We can see we have a successful track. Of note, if you'd like to change the size or position of the starting of the text, you can use the text note for that. If you like this tutorial, please give me a like and a subscribe. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.